Hello and welcome to Where the Road Rises, Law, Lessons, Legacy, with me, your host, Eileen Curlin walsh One of our aims here at Channel 4 is to bring you political figures, explain their role in the various government bodies, and explain what it is that they do for you. And if it's been a minute since you studied civics, our first tier of government, remember, is the federal law. Second tier is state law. Third tier is county law. And the fourth tier is local, municipal. And if your head is not already spinning, we then have township law also in the mix. So we want to help you understand these layers of government, understand exactly what the various politicians do, and most importantly, how their decisions affect you. We want you to pay attention and make informed decisions when you vote. We have spoken with federal politicians, including United States Senator Roland Burris, United States Congressman Dan Lipinski. We have spoken to your state senator. We had Bill Cunningham in here, and we also had Illinois State Representative Kelly Burke. Recent guests have been longtime Stickney Township Supervisor Lou Viverito and Cook County Commissioner Donna Miller. And today we will visit municipal government. Of all forms of government, local government is the most accessible and often the most meaningful to its community. Most of us care deeply about our local officials and how our towns are run. And with us today to talk about the role of local government is attorney Heather Begley, alderman for Palis, Wards, thir Palis Heights 3rd Ward. Welcome, Thank you Heather. so much, Eileen. Thank you for having me today. I really appreciate being a guest on your show. Well, that we're delighted to have you, Heather, and we're delighted to have women get into the local government. And one of the things we're going to do is take care of that alderman term. <laughs> I think we might want to have alder person. But anyway, I'm sure there are more important things that have to be taken care of first. Heather, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background and, and how you grew up and your journey to the Palos Heights sure, Alderman Eileen, role? Sure, thank you so much. I'm actually a Southside girl. I grew up um, in Mount Greenwood. I grew up in that area. I went to Mother Macaulay, then I went down to U of I, and I went to DePaul for law school. I've been a Palos Heights resident for about 14 years now, and I just absolutely have grown to love the area. We're still not too far from you know, the, the Mount Greenwood area, but I just, I love the forest preserves here. I love the neighbors. I love everything about it. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful community. And as you were growing up, going, growing up in the South Side, going to parochial schools, you went to, your schools were all in Illinois. Did you have a role model, a mentor, someone who kind of, um, gave you, helped you reach for the I stars? I did. You know, um, I was really close with all my family. So my aunt was definitely a, def a, um, a female role model for mm -hmm. me. She was a professional woman. She went to work every day, got up at five. So she mm -hmm. kind of helped f mold me in that regard that I wanted to grow up and mm -hmm. uh, become a professional. Mm -hmm. But then I also had another mentor when I was um, in law school. I, I was a clerk at Clifford Law Offices. And so a lot of the attorneys there, particularly one in, in, uh, in particular, Kevin Durkin, he kind of really got me involved in personal injury law yeah. and in the courtroom and things like that. Yeah. So really, I mean, you're so lucky when you have a good mentor and somebody that can kind of help you and you can go to. And um, so it's, I've been grateful to have that experience in my life. I agree, Heather, and I think it also gives us the responsibility then to make sure that we provide mentorship Absolutely. for those coming after us. One of our guests, Pamela Payne, in this show said one time, it's good to have somebody reaching a hand down when we need it to climb up, and we should always then reach the hand reach back, back down Absolutely. again. Absolutely. Yeah. It's so, it's so important. So then your area of law is? So I practice in personal injury law. Okay. My, I primarily, the majority of my cases are medical malpractice, medical negligence cases. And I actually have a little bit of experience on the other side. I was a defense attorney for some of the big hospitals and uh, physicians in the mm -hmm. area. And now I'm back on the personal injury side. Mm -hmm. So we, I do different uh, types of, I do nursing home cases, I do auto cases, um, I do birth injury. So a, a variety of different medical negligence cases primarily. 
And Heather, as I was reading your bio, one of the things I find interesting was you said you help people recover when they've had these traumatic experiences. And that helped me make a mental shift because I always think of adversarial law, litigation as, as real warrior law. But while you have to, of course, zealously represent your clients, you're helping them recover. You're helping them get past these terrible you're, things that happen. You really are, Eileen. And when I do mm. prepare my clients to give their depositions, I always remind them, this is your chance to tell the defendants and to tell the insurance companies what it is that you've been through. Mm -hmm. And so it puts a personal face to the, to the mm -hmm. experience. Yeah. And it helps them actually say, okay, someone's listening to what I've been through, yeah. whether it was a back injury or a, a, a mm -hmm. relative died or something of that nature. It's, it's actually part of their recovery to get that story mm -hmm. out. Yeah, and I'm sure your caring nature really helps them through that difficult Thank process you. too. No, Heather. I really do. Um, I just enjoy the work because mm -hmm. I feel like it has an impact on these families. So it's, it's important to me. Lovely. So let's talk about how you became an alderman in Palos Heights. Let's talk a little bit about that journey yeah. and how it's been for you so far. So I never thought I would kind of get into politics, so to speak. But a couple of years ago, I ran for judge. Mm -hmm. And it was a really good experience for me. I met a lot of different people. I wasn't successful in my campaign, but I kind of got a little um, insight into the political world, so mm -hmm. to speak. Mm -hmm. And I just, like I said earlier, I absolutely love Palos Heights. And there's things that I've been um, kind of you know, keen on or aware of, of things that maybe we need to bring younger people in, bring more women in. Mm -hmm. So I thought, what better chance than to get involved at the local level. So tell me about the process of running and you were, you were successful, you've been elected. What sort of adversity did you face? Was there sexism? Um, did you, maybe your experience in the world of litigation, was that a, a benefit to you? How I, was the experience? I think it was a good experience for me in all fairness. Um, the actual process is very tiring when you run for any campaign. Mm -hmm. It starts out, actually they're doing this right now, they're getting their signatures on the petitions. That's the first step to get on the ballot. So um, that's a, you know, it's a good experience. You're out meeting with voters. Um, and I, I won't say that I had any personal experience with sexism within the Palos Heights community or within the, uh, with our other elected officials or anything. Everyone's been pretty supportive getting me on track. I got sworn in in May uh -huh. and so we've already, you know, done a few projects. So it's good. Lovely. Yeah, thanks. So you find the, pro so how do you find the health of Palos Heights? How do you find so the community? How do you find our current government? And you can be as free as a bird. <laughs> Do you know, I'll be really upfront with you and, and honest, and our, our residents are very involved. And so I do hear a lot from my residents with, you know, just their little complaints or their big complaints of whatever it is. And so we take that input from the community and we bring that at the local level here within mm -hmm. the, the, you know, we have committee meetings and then mm -hmm. we have city council meetings. So all of those issues are discussed, which I think is good because we kind of have our, a direct communication line with our residents. Mm -hmm. And so um, our elected officials, though, honestly, are great. Our mayor is heavily involved. We're, we're really fiscally sound. So I'm, I'm happy to report that Pales Heights is thriving. That's brilliant. And, yeah. and I, we have had the mayor on here on the show before. He's so supportive. He's wonderful. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, really yeah, is. yeah. yeah. He's, he's a treasure. Um, and how does your background as a lawyer and as a mother, um, how does that inform how you are as a politician? So I, I'll speak to being a mother first. I have two girls. I have a, a junior at Stag, and then I have an eighth grader at, at South. So uh, they've grown up in this community. So it's we've been to the rec center. We've been mm -hmm. to all these, you know, mm -hmm. the schools, everything of that nature. We're at Lake Catherine. So I think I have firsthand knowledge that I'm able to then translate to policy making decisions, which mm -hmm. is what we're doing as aldermen. I think I sometimes early on kind of irritated some of our aldermen when I said, well, look at code, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> not that they're not engaged in that way too, but my training is in law. Yeah, yes. And so I, um, I feel like, you know, right away, I, they ordered me the nice big code book. And so mm -hmm. I've been able to kind of go through that. And it, yeah. it helps set the foundation for where we're going as a, as a town. And Heather, how do, and th th do you think it's interesting that you come as a lawyer bringing that we go to the seminal documents to get the foundation of the law, regardless what area of law it is or what tier of government it's within. How do you find the local law? How do you find it connects, interweaves with state and federal 
Township. Could you speak a little to that for our viewers who wonder what all these tiers of government are? Do we need them? What What's it all about? Sure. It's it's actually very important that we do have all these different tiers. And it's, it's, their, it's actually its own checks and balances, you know, that keeps us in check even at the local level. Uh -huh. We're following the state laws. At a local level, it's very interesting. We have our, um, you know, our, our municipal code, but we also have policies as to how things operate, how um, how projects get funded, all these different things that we're following to ensure that we're spending tax dollars appropriately, uh -huh. and there's uh, there's oversight on that. Okay. And so, um, and then just you know. Um, I think people have been really in tune, I won't say the word, but COVID has kind of <laughs> really ex exposed a lot of our residents um, to what it is to have federal law, to have state law, local uh, laws, county laws. Yeah. So I think we're all kind of experiencing it right now when there's yeah. new rules that come in or new laws. And since you mentioned the health unrest, <laughs> which we were not going to do, Heather, how do you feel Palos Heights has responded and how do you think we're doing now? I think we've done great. I think that we are, um, you know, there's, I think it, at the end of the day, it's a personal decision how people want to ma maintain their health. Yeah. But um, I think that, um, you know, I think Hale Sites has fared pretty well. Yeah, good, good, good. And hopefully we're going up. Hopefully the journey is onwards and upwards, Absolutely. Not, not backwards. Absolutely. Most of us do understand some of the big local government responsibilities, such as police and fire and public works. Is there anything that our local government takes care of that might surprise our viewers? Well, I think that um, every Every, in, within Palos Heights, any funds that are spent that are over $5,000 have to be approved at the council level. So I think that's something that really is, um, is good for people to know that mm -hmm. there's always discussion about what money is being spent. Yeah. There's always approval at issue. So I mm -hmm. think that's something that uh, I didn't know prior to getting sworn in as alderman that it was at such a finite level. I have to say I, I am surprised about that number too yeah. because if uh, that number of eyes are going to be on any figure over 5,000, then we can have some comfort that somebody isn't just going to write a $100,000 check right. without anyone deciding if that is a really good decision for all of the community members. Yeah, it's great. What about some of the projects you're working on for 2022 and beyond? Yeah, so within the um, Palos Heights area, you know, one of the things that we just had approved was there's an intersection near Oak Park Avenue and Route 83 that some residents have voiced concerns that the speed limit is too high there and that we need an actual uh, traffic signal okay. there. So we have um, retained a, an organization to study that. So okay. I think that moving forward in 2022, we will probably have a, a signal place there if, if deemed necessary. And then we're getting a Pete's Market, which everyone is excited about, I yes. think. Yes. We're uh, likely going to have a gas station going in in the next year with uh, on, on, on Harlem and College Drive. So there's some big projects that are coming in. And our economic development is always in the works. We're always yeah. trying to bring more businesses in. And uh, there's some new restaurants. and. The Haven is a new indoor golf um, ah. spot that opened. So yeah, I think I think we're onward, you know, up up and up yeah. and at <laughs> What about that Pete's Fresh Market? We all <laughs> love a Pete's Fresh Market. Can you tell us where it might be? Right. So that's going to be going in on Ridgeland and 127th in the Old Dominics. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, there's yeah. still um, it's still all in the works, but yeah, yeah. that would that will meet a real need. I hope mm -hmm. I hope that's successful. Yeah. And what about your vision? Heather, what will you uniquely bring to the role and how do you see what you can do, what you can contribute going forward well, for Palos Heights? Well, on the City Council, I'm probably one of the youngest members. I think uh, myself and Brent are around the same age, Alderman Lewandowski. But as a mom, I'm in touch with what's going on within the community. So I feel like I have kind of my pulse on what's going on, what's mm -hmm. what we need at the rec center, what other types of businesses you know we should be encouraging to come in, things like that. So yeah. I have a real, uh, I think, a, a close, I mean, and the, the nice thing about our city council, in all honesty, Eileen, is some of these individuals have been on the council for a long time. Mm -hmm. So they're almost like the historians. Yes. You know, they can they can reach back and, and identify, oh, well, we did that 10 years ago, we did that 12 years ago, mm -hmm. which is great. Mm -hmm. So it's a nice balance. So that's a lot of experience, but then as you say, you come in fresh, new, your children are using the right. uh, facilities in the community. 
So if there's a need, if there's a gap, you can see it too. I, I think so. So yeah, I love the fact that they, we have the experience as well as the fresh blood. Right. I love that. How can residents of Palos Heights find out more about what's happening or if they have any questions, who can they reach out to, Heather? Well, they're always welcome to reach out to any of the aldermen, any of the elected officials, even our uh, city administrators. We have this awesome resource here, um, which is Channel 4. Everyone loves it. And um, all the city council meetings are actually broadcast on Channel 4. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, that's a nice, easy way to kind of keep tabs on what's going on. Absolutely. But they're always very welcome to reach out if you have any questions, comments. We love mm -hmm. to hear from everyone. Yeah. And, and isn't Channel 4 great? It I'm, is. I'm so proud of what Ron has been doing with Channel 4 in the last it, 20 years where his plans are for the future and that I have got to be part of the Channel 4 story <laughs> now for 10 years and no, it's met wonderful. so many wonderful people. I have learned so much both from researching for my guests and what they have to tell us. I just feel that I have expanded. I feel like the hairdresser or the dentist or the <laughs> taxi driver who learns so much about the world from the wonderful people they talk it's to. It's wonderful. And we learned last night at City Council actually that they received an award from Comcast and they received a very complimentary letter just saying that <sighs> they're doing great work at Channel 4. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, that's wonderful. <laughs> and very, very well deserved. So on a deeper level, Heather, what is your greatest takeaway now from your public office? And how do you stay grounded? And how do you maintain that coveted work-life balance? Because you have your work, you have your young children, and now you've taken on the role of public official. You know, Eileen, you probably experienced this yourself. It helps so much if you have a supportive husband, ah. supportive place of employment. My law firm, Tomasa Coat and Casterman, they've been fantastic in encouraging me to get involved, stay involved. Um, and then in terms of the work-life balance, you know, it's just looking at your schedule. What yeah. do you have to do for the day? And I think I just try to take my days one at a time, you know, with the general sense of what's coming mm -hmm. up ahead. Yeah. But, um, you know, I have three trials coming up this year and they're kind of all out in collar counties. Yeah. And so those kind of set the, the big chunk of time. So my family needs to know yeah. mom's not going to be home that week, you know, yeah. but they're, they're, they're great about it. Yeah. So and good. I'm sure they find it exciting too. Yeah. No, they're trying awesome. cases. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's lovely. And a supportive husband. And full disclosure, <laughs> Heather's <laughs> husband and my husband come from this tiny little townland in Kerry, Ireland. They, your, my husband went to school with your husband's yeah, older to, brother. Yeah, so. it's just such a small world. I it mean, if, if, if you could picture it on a map, it's probably about a mile apart their houses, really. Yeah, I mean, it's so absolutely. funny that they were so close. Yeah, and if they had stayed in that little village, we would certainly <laughs> never have met them. I. And though I come from Ireland, I met my husband in an Irish pub. How about you, Heather? Same thing. Keegan's, oh, Keegan's God, pub on no. uh, Western God, Avenue. Love it. <laughs> yeah, we don't meet our Irish husbands at the opera. Oh, <laughs> uh, I love it. All right, last couple of questions. Of all your life, your career, your family, your education, your childhood, what are you most proud of now? As you look back, you have many years ahead, but for the life you've lived to date, what are you most proud of? You know, honestly, it's my family, and, it's, and this has really resonated a lot. I mean, it's something I think about all the time, but I am so proud of my girls, yeah. and, and I just feel like I've been able to be, you know, such a, a close part of their lives, and it's, it's something that really just makes me yeah. so proud. Yeah, <laughs> and a role model to those beautiful young women heading out in the world, seeing mom handle everything that she does, mm -hmm. take everything on trials, be a politician, nothing is a barrier to what you want to do and you're showing that to them. Now what advice would you offer to other young women or anyone who wants to be successful, wants to get out in the world, wants to cross barriers? What's your greatest piece Eileen, of advice? I would really tell people that they just need to go for it because you're always going to hit some kind of barrier, you're always going to hit an obstacle, but it's, it's worth it. Just go for it. Yeah. I mean, it's such a simple thing, but I think it's really important that people just get out there and do it. Just do it. <laughs> I love it. Okay, any little poem, quote, inspirational piece that you would like to leave our well, audience well, with? Well, your assistant asked if I had anything of that nature, and I have to tell you I actually do. I, there's, this, there's a book um, by an author, John O'Donohue. He's an Irish author. And when she mentioned this, it, this came to mind immediately. So if it's okay, I wouldn't mind. I would love to read it to your absolutely. To your listeners. And we'd love to hear it. Let me just find it here. It's right in the beginning, right off the bat here. I'm going to have you say the title because it's a Gaelic <laughs> word. It is Anbanacht, which means 
What does it mean? The blessing. The blessing. Okay, so this is the blessing by John O'Donohue. On the weight when the on the day when the weight deadens on your shoulders and you stumble, may the clay dance to balance you. And when your eyes freeze behind the gray window and the ghost of loss gets into you, may a flock of colors, indigo, red, green, and azure blue, come to awaken in you a meadow of delight. When the canvas frays in the karak of thought and a stain of ocean blackens beneath you, may there come across the waters a path of yellow moonlight to bring you safely home. May the nourishment of the earth be yours. May the clarity of light be yours. May the fluency of the ocean be yours. May the protection of the ancestors be yours. And may a slow wind work these words of love around you, an invisible cloak to mind your life. I just think that's so nice, Eileen. It's, you know, there's darkness, there's light in life, and that one really just kind of reflects that. But we are always onward and upward. Oh. I love that. I think we need to bring Heather back every year, <laughs> don't you, viewers? She can come back and give us an update on what's happening in Palos and read us a lovely poem. Thank you so <laughs> Thank much, you Heather. So much, it's I appreciate been it. a delight to get to know you, to find out what you're doing in your law and in your life and for the Palos Heights community. Thanks again. Thanks, Eileen. Thank you, viewers, for watching, and we will see you next time on Where the Road Rises. Thanks and bye. Thank you.